On April 8th, 2024, there will be a full total solar eclipse in North America, and it won't happen again for 20 years. Right now, you should prepare to take pictures by practicing. I'll show you how. All you really need is some solar film. Cut the solar film to size and tape it over the front of your lens. If you plan on regularly shooting the sun and your lens supports them, invest in a front screw-on solar filter. Match the filter size to your lens's front element. Film filters are actually sharper. The glass filters just tend to be a little more durable. They won't tear as easily. Do not use regular ND filters. They are not designed to block all ultraviolet and infrared light, and using them could damage your sensor or your eye. Don't use a rear solar film filter or you will burn right through it. <laughs> Learn that the hard way. You'll want to watch the eclipse between shots too, so buy solar sunglasses. Make sure they're ISO certified so they block IR light that might damage your eyes. Put your camera on the biggest tripod you have. Okay, you could handhold, but you'd be surprised how hard it is to handhold, especially because you're gonna be cropping way in. Notice that I'm using a really tall tripod. That's because the camera is gonna be pointed up in the air, which means either I can lay on the ground and look up at it, or I can get a tall tripod that's taller than me so I can be more comfortable. If you find it hard to make really minor adjustments to your tripod head to keep the sun in the frame, try adjusting the legs of the tripod to line the sun up. What I have here is a Canon 500mm f4 with a 2x teleconverter, and then I put on a micro four thirds body. If you don't yet have a telephoto lens, you can get an inexpensive manually focusing mirror lenses that will produce great results. This link takes you to lenses that are in stock with two day shipping. So now I'm at about 2000 millimeters and I'm still gonna have to crop because the sun's like the biggest thing in the solar system, but it's still pretty far away. <laughs> What I don't want you to do is to get an SLR and look through the viewfinder. If you have a mirrorless camera, use the viewfinder. If you have an SLR, always be using live view because I don't want you to be magnifying the sun. It's gonna be really powerful through the viewfinder. Do not look through the viewfinder, even with solar film, because you don't know that solar film could just uh, fall off. With the solar film covering the front of the lens, we're gonna get the sun in the frame. If you have a hard time finding the sun, Put your eyes in the shade of your camera and look down your lens to line it up with the sun. The sun moves. So if you get the sun in the frame, a couple of minutes later, it's gonna be solidly out of the frame. I have the lens at F8, doesn't so much matter. Don't shut it down too much or you'll suffer from diffraction and lose sharpness, but be wide open or one or two stops down. Focusing is actually really hard. If you can autofocus, that's great, but you might not really be able to rely on it. Um, so what I do is I, use the viewfinder magnification feature here and I zoom in all the way and then I manually focus just to make sure that it's as good as it can possibly get. Then let the camera auto expose on the sun, but look at the histogram. You might have to adjust the exposure compensation down so the sun isn't overexposed because you want the sun to be a nice orange disc. You do not want the sun to be overexposed. So look at the histogram and make sure that it looks like this histogram then choose a delayed shutter. It's gonna be really shaky on a tripod with a telephoto lens, so use like a 10 second delayed shutter or so. If you don't wanna use a delayed shutter or you get tired of just being in the sun, fire up the Wi-Fi app on your phone, connect to your camera, and then you can remotely control it from the shade. And when you're ready, you push the shutter button and don't move, don't walk around or you'll shake the ground a little bit. It's really hard to get it super, super clear at this magnification. See that sunspot in the lower right corner? That's AR2665, and it's 19 times larger than the Earth. That's the kind of amazing thing you can see when you photograph the sun. So I took one picture, now I'm gonna take more pictures because you wanna be absolutely sure that you got it, especially on the day of the eclipse. At the apex of the eclipse, at the totality, things will get really dark, at least if you're in that part of North America where you get that. You can take your filter off at this point. So keep that in mind as you're planning. If you're in the path of the totality, you're gonna wanna be able to take that off. So just have it available so you can reach it. For me, I put it on this lens hood here so I could just take the lens hood off real quick. And then you wanna put it back on before it gets too sunny. To see these steps written down and to get a printable checklist, visit sdp.io slash solar. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn more about photography, including astrophotography, check out my book, Stunning Digital Photography, the number one photography book in the world. If you want to learn how to clean up your pictures, check out our Lightroom and Photoshop books, or just subscribe for lots of free videos, several new videos every week. If you have questions or other tips, 
write a comment down below and share it with your friends so they don't miss out on the eclipse.